hello good day from here thank you for stopping by my channel thank you for watching this video now in this video i will be talking briefly to linear models in stata i'll talk uh, to on to predictive analysis uh, linear regression models and hierarchical regression my name is peter daniel uh, i have a phd in applied economics and also a lead consultant in smart africa r d consult so in this course i will run you through the slides and uh, talk theoretically on the various models after which i will do a hands-on session to operationalize all I have, uh, all I'll be teaching using Stata. All right. Introduction to predictive analysis. So predictive analysis refers to using statistical, historical data, machine learning, and artificial intelligence to predict what will happen in the future in this analysis kind of analysis you are making use of what is currently known to determine what is unknown or to rather predict what is unknown so if i try to compare predictive analysis and prescriptive analysis i say predictive analysis gives an indication of what may happen it's prescriptive Analysis is why prescriptive analysis shows the way to make it happen. That is regression. And prescriptive analysis differ in that it not only identifies what's likely to happen, it also presents the user with specific options. That's when we talk about optimization model. That's the linear programming model. So types of predictive analysis we have regression analysis, logistic analysis, probit analysis, multinomial logit analysis, ordered logit or ordered probit, tobit analysis, and hierarchical regression. These are the various kinds of regression analysis that are predictive in its operations. So for this video, I will talk extensively to regression analysis and logit analysis. Then I'll try to do the hands-on session on uh, regression analysis. Now, regression analysis can be uh, has about uh, four different types. We have the linear regression. Now, the linear regression in this kind of regression both the dependent and the independent variable are in its natural state. The both dependent and the independent variable are discrete variables. They are just random variables. They are the date, raw data as it were when you collect it. We also have the log linear regression analysis. Now, the log linear regression log linear regression regression the log linear regression this kind of regression where you also call semi log better still first call semi log semi log so semi log now having two types so that is log linear or it's all linear log. All right. So if it's log linear, it means that you will log your dependent variable while you leave the independent variable in its natural state as, as raw data collected. But if it's linear log, it means the dependent variable is not log. Why the independent variables are log? Then we have the Cobb-Douglas regression. The 
Kubdobla's regression means you will log both the dependent and the independent variable. Tobit model, which both uh, doubles as a maximum likelihood model and also a linear model, although the result comes out uh, more often less than OLS model, it's a censored regression. What this means is that you, ha you have the ability to left sensor right sensor or probably you sensor in the middle what this means is that when you have a dependent variable and probably you want to do analysis with only a particular portion of the data set of the random variable tobit model gives you the ability to sensor your data So when you run a regression model, the output comes up like this. Just as soon as I finish the slides now, I'll quickly go through and do a hands-on session using Stata. Now, one of the problems a lot of people face is how, what does the result I'm having, what does it mean? How do I interpret it? So the output comes out like this in three tables in, in, in Stata. The first table is the ANOVA table. Then we have the summary table. They will now have the other table. That's the table that has the coefficients. So what are the key things you look at here? You look at your F statistics. You look at your R, the R squared. Then on the tables, you look at the T values of the coefficient to determine T or P values, whichever one works fine for you, to determine which of the variable is significant and which is not significant. When you run a regression model, an F value that is above 5 is acceptable. It's acceptable. It's good that your F value is above the figure of 5. In this model now, the F value is 6.3. So, and you see the p-value is significant at 1%. Also, when you run a regression model, an R-square that is above 50 is desirable. Now, it's not in all regression models you are trying to look for a high R-square. A lot of students try to disturb themselves about having a high R-square. It's not all the time. Sometimes, you run the regression model to look at variables that are significant, not necessarily to check if the if the R square is high. Or however, the rule of thumb is the R square should be at least above 50%. In the in the case of this result on the screen now, the R square is way below 50% and not desirable in model. It's not you you'll be you should rerun this model. Uh, trying other variables to see that you get a good R um, square. But the a P value, but the F value shows that the model itself was well specified. But in interpretation, it shows that the model was well specified. Why the R square shows the extent of variation in the dependent variable that is as a result of the independent variable for example in the regression on the screen if i'm trying to interpret r square i will say that nine percent of the variation in the dependent variable is as a result of the variables captured in the in in the model why the remaining 91 percent will be attributed to error now you understand why we say the r square should be above 50 if you prove if you specify a model and you are giving a larger portion to error, then what is the use of the model? So that's what that talks to. Then another key thing you want to interpret is your T value. Um, your T value, based on the level of significance that, is, that you, you are testing your, your coefficient, you can, uh, normally this T value are tested in three, very, three different coefficients. 10%, at 5%, and also at 1%. It is significant at 10% when the T value is, is 
and above but below 1.95. It is even at 5% when your T value is 1.95 above or below 2.58. It is even at 1% when your T value is above 2.58. Another thing you look at as well is to be to ensure that to look at the signs, the signs of your coefficient. The signs of your coefficient will also determine the story you will tell around the data. The coefficients that are positive, coefficient means there's a direct and proportional relationship between the independent variable and that particular uh, the dependent variable and that particular independent variable. Why the negative coefficient depicts an inverse relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variable. If I talk to this table now, we see, mind you, you don't interpret uh, the, the, the coefficient that is not significant. Any coefficient that is not significant, you ignore it. So coming down to the result we have on the screen, we see income is significant at 1%. We see Food consumption is significant at 1%. We see occupation is significant at 5%. And the dependent variable here is BMI, this body marks index. Now, this was uh, a training slides I used to train people in the health sector. Uh, when I'll be doing the hands on section, I will generate other hypothetical, hypothetical data. The data I used here too was just generated randomly. For the training session, I also generate a, for the practical session I'll be doing on state, I'll just generate a random variable. The essence of, the, of my video is that you understand what to do, the right thing to do, and not to cram the approach. So that you don't bother yourself trying to get the same result. What is important is that you know the right thing to do, that you control the data and know, okay, this is what it should give me because you know it. The data does not forge does not uh, make you to to be disturbed based on the result. Okay, so if I'm going to talk to this now, the income now, we see income here is significant at 1%. The coefficient is positive, has a positive sign, and the T-value is significant at 1%. So if I'm to interpret this, I will say that a unit increase in income of either, is either the respondent will lead to about 1.2 unit increase in the body mass index of the respondent. So unit increase in the coefficient in the, in the income will lead to 1.2 unit increase in the body mass index. This is a regression output of a linear model. When you interpret a linear model, you interpret unit increase leads to unit increase. When you interpret a semi-log model, you interpret percentage increase lead to unit increase or unit increase lead to percentage increase. Depends on where you log. Then when you interpret a Cobb douglas model, you will say unit percentage increase lead to percentage increase. So if you, you look at, if you pay attention to my wordings, I said that unit increase in the income of the respondent will lead to 1.2 unit increase in the body mass index of the respondent. This is a case of a linear model. All right. So for a Cobb Douglas model, is also a result of the Cobb Douglas model. So you look at if you look at the code, the the the, uh, the codes. You see, we have the log. We have introduced the component of the log. Introduce the component of the log in this model. So when you check here, income is also significant here. At 1%, we have food consumption is significant at 1% as well. If I'm to interpret the food consumption, I will say that one a percentage increase in food consumption will lead to about 7.7% increase in the body mass index. Now pay attention to my language. I'm now saying the percentage increase will lead to percentage increase. And of course, 
my f value is above 5 which is okay although the r square is low but based on the f value this model can be accepted all right so let me go to the next slide all right okay so go douglas now so let me go to the next slide now for a turbid model like i said when you want to run a turbid model you have the ability to sensor either you sensor uh leftward or you sensor rightward turbid model is appropriate or is best fit when you have a dependent variable that is continuous when your dependent variable is continuous it means your dependent variable assume figure between 0.1 up to maybe the maximum you may have point something so if you have this kind of dependent variable and probably you want to run a regression with one point above you want to neglect the zero the worst depending whether that below zero you can sensor and if the case if the, the otherwise you want to run a regression with a model the depending whether that below one turbid model is the best approach in the field of applied economics field of agriculture turbid model is best model best suited when you want to run uh, any analysis where productivity is your dependent variable sometimes profit model are also used when you want to run a uh, uh, dependent when your dependent variable is uh, food security and they, they, that is if you have captured your food security in continuous uh, way although it's usually not the best but sometimes can be adopted so now turbid model because the essence of turbid model is not necessarily to look at the r square because turbid model does not give you r square it gives you a pseudo r so you pay more attention to the chi square in this case now in this case there's no f value the chi square is what you pay attention to and your chi square is expected to be significant so based on the result we have on the board this model has to be rejected because the chi square is not significant your chi square should be significant at worst case at 10 percent remember i told you that this data set which was generated hypothetically just to teach the student the participant on how to operationalize the uh, model not necessarily to get a very good result so in this case the, the chi square will the model as a overall will be rejected because the chi square is not significant the chi square in turbid model tells you if the model was well specified okay but if i'm to go through the t value you see none of the values none of these questions none of the variables i mean is significant all right next slide I hope the, the when we the, the one the data set I'll generate will be able to get a significant uh, model so I can interpret properly. So hierarchical regression. Hierarchical regression is a technique which can be used to compare several different mod linear models. The basic idea is that we best fit a linear model, regression model, with just one explanatory variable, then we fit another regression model with additional explanatory variable. If the R square, the proportion of variance in the response variable that can be explained on the explanatory variable in the second model is significantly higher than the R uh, than the R square in the previous model, this means the second model is better. What this this is actually also called a stepwise regression. This is a kind of regression you run when you are trying to get the best best model possible from your different data set. It's cost step uh, stepwise because you have your dependent variable in constant while you keep uh, alternating the independent variable. That is, uh, you put the first one based on the R square. That will be your what you used to judge the the, uh, the 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 effectiveness or the quality of the model. Now, so when i will do and i'm doing hands-on i will show you how that can be done we then repeat the process fitting additional regression models with more explanation and seeing if the newer models offer improvement over the previous so 
what this means is that I have my dependent variable, right? I put the first independent variable. I repeat the same process with another independent variable. If that new variable are added improves the R, R square, then it's good for the model. If otherwise, then I'll remove it and try another one. Now, this is how the regression output comes out. It's just like your normal OLS. All right. Okay, this is model one now. You see, model one, I only have food consumption. Now, in model two, I have I've added height, right? Now, in model three, I've added age. That's how are you, right? So that's how it is done. Then, of course. Uh, this okay. This slide is just a brief interpretation of the of the regression model. All right, thank you. So I will quickly go to hands on now. Then uh, once I finish this, I will see if I can also based on what. And once I finish this, I will uh, quickly. quickly talk to logit model in this video as well so we'll have a full video all right so uh in my previous video of course i've showed you how to uh launch your stata bring your variables down there and and also let's briefly examine the variables so so the variables this these variables i think okay this is for a catfish production enterprise so we have the input which is fingerlings feeds labor drugs uh, the fuel used um, the size of the pond and uh, i think i will just drop fuel let me drop fuel let me drop fuel uh let me also drop fuel here so that uh, all right so let me talk to production co-production variables all right so we have the link the link the data and the logged one the data as collected from the field and the logged data this is now logged so i have three y here i have this is my first dependent variable output it's not logged i have the one that is logged then i added another y which is for the two bit model analysis all right so first thing to do uh is to okay let me clear this result window. Yeah, clear result window. So on your stata, the first thing to do is to set your working directory. So I say CD. I want to work from. Uh, I want to work from. Project files. No, I want to work from stata training. So I will come. And I'll copy the part. I'll copy as part. Copy as part. So I've set my working directory. Now I want to set more up. I don't want to be seen more. I want all my results to display at once. Then um, what else do I do next? Uh, okay, I want to log using uh, let me log using regression training regression underscore training all right so i've logged using regression underscore training so the first thing is of course you describe let's see the kind of data we have how it is stored, what it looks like. So I've described all my variables. I've seen the storage type. I see display, then I see the variable label. So we see now that label does not have a label, and 
I want to label label. So let me say label label define and to label okay label variable and to label variable label let me label it label as well okay then I also want to label variable natural log of label let me label it natural log of label so let me describe again so you see the changes so now all the variables are now labeled now the value label is i've not given at the this since it's just a regression model there's no need to give it a value label and more so i don't have categorical variables so there's no need to label that all right so uh the next thing is i want to summarize so i have summarized i've seen just to confirm if my observations are complete so i have 205 observations and they are all complete none is missing here and they have the mean standard deviation minimum and the maximum all right i hope you're enjoying this video please do like the video and subscribe to the channel i will be doing a whole lot of analysis on stata this uh, period i'll be talking to a lot of regression models a lot of profit models uh, i'll be talking to uh, food security poverty analysis i'll be talking to uh, preferences score matching i'll talk to this i'll talk a lot about you stand you, you stand to gain a lot when you subscribe i will drop a lot of videos and I would like you to benefit from what I will be dropping. Feel free to reach out to me via email, my phone number. You can always check out my website, www.smartdreams.com. And ask any question you have, I'll be glad to respond and support your analysis career. And also, if you have a project you are running and you need to know the best approach or methodology to adopt, feel free to reach out. Kindly subscribe and help us promote the channel and reach out to other people so that they come and get a very good uh, knowledge all right so let me do the first uh, i'll take it based on the slides now i will go to uh the regression models so linear model so let me do the linear model so to run the linear model i will just say regress so if my dependent variable here is output then my independent variable is fingerlings feed labor drug on size Let's do this then enter all right so like i told you earlier the result comes out with three tables anova table the summary statistics here and of course the t the coefficient table wow this is a very good analysis as it is so i said earlier we look at the summary statistics the number of observations is 205 uh the all right i'm which i'm trying timing myself i don't want the videos to be too long now the wow the f value is super high 597 no wonder we have a very high a high r square of 93 percent now this is uh hypothetical for the purpose of this of this uh of this analysis all right so to interpret this i will say the f value is significant at one percent and it does shows that the model was well specified then the next very uh, summary statistics i look at is the r square the r square 
of the analysis is 93.75%, uh, which, which shows that, which suggests that 93.75% uh, of the variation in the dependent variable, which is output now, which catfish output, is as a result of the independent variable, which are, are the inputs now. Which are the inputs. Why the remaining, I think we have about 6.25% that is remaining before it gets to 100 now. If I'm correct, you just minus that figure from 1 or minus it from 100. Let me quickly do that. Uh, so you are, sh you are, you can see what I'm saying. Calculator. So to calculate the error term, you just minus one minus zero point nine three seven five. Yeah, that will be six point two five. I multiply of course by 100. Yeah, 6.25 is correct. So 6.25 percent is as a result of as a result of variables not captured in the model, which is now the error time. All right. Now talking to the coefficient outputs. Now the t value. For finger lens is significant at one percent. For feed is significant at one percent. For labor it is significant at one percent. For drugs it is significant at five percent. For pond size it is not significant at all. All right. So let me interpret this. Uh, usually the co a co uh, the production models they are always expected to. You always want to have a positive empire expectation. Especially when it's Cook Douglas, although this is in a linear form, but it's not always so in practice. So, to interpret this, I'll say uh, a unit increase for finger lens. Finger lens was positive, has a positive significant coefficient and statistically significant at 1% probability level. This and suggests that a unit increase in finger lens will lead to. 0 0.68 unit increase in catfish output. Right? Excuse me. Also, a unit increase in feed, those feed is also positive. So, unit increase in feed, feed is positive and statistically significant at 1%. So, unit increase in feed will lead to 3.8 unit increase in the output of catfish. So let me talk to drugs. Drugs is positive and significant statistical signal at 5% probability level. It shows that the unit increase in drugs will lead to 0 0.009 unit increase in the output of catfish. So that is just all about uh, a linear regression model. So let me now we now have semi log, which can either be log linear regression or linear log. Remember, I said the log linear means that the dependent variable is logged, while the independent variables are not logged. So I would let me log this and say uh, so to be regress. log output this is log then the independent variables are not logged yeah all right so um so this is a log linear dependent variable is logged the independent variable no log. So you see, uh, what are the changes? The f value reduced, the r square increased. No, sorry, the f value increased, 
concurrently with the R square and uh, okay okay now drugs became insignificant and of course labor size became insignificant okay drugs became and pawn size became insignificant but fingerlings feet and labor still remain significant although the, the t value increased all right so is it now if i'm to interpret this let me interpret uh feed for instance i'll say a unit increase in feed will lead to 0.16 percent increase in the fingerling output so to get that all we just need to do is to say you multiply the coefficient by 100 to get the percentage increase so I'll say 0 0.0016122 multiply by 100. Okay, so that's that. So a unit increase in the feed, that is if you give the 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 catfish more feed, it will lead to 0.16% increase in the output of catfish. The coefficient is positive as well, that's why we have a proportional relationship. Unit increase leading to unit increase. Unit increase, unit increase leading to uh, percentage uh, increase all right all right okay i believe you understand i believe i hope i'm not too fast and i'm trying to take it step wise uh, slowly so that to have an understanding so that you can do your analysis yourself and better understand your regression models all right we can also repeat the same process now but now the, de the dependent variable is is not logged which this is now a uh, linear log so i will put output is not logged then the independent variables are now logged so that is linear log it's also semi log okay so in this case the f value reduced R value also reduced and just a slight change in the significance of the coefficient we see now that the coefficients are higher very high you can't you can't obviously interpret this because the coefficients are just too high just too high of course it may just be a problem with the data sets again the T values uh drugs became significant now so you follow the same way like i interpreted the first one to interpret this so but in this case now let me just take an example of uh, drugs now i will now say a unit increase a one percent increase in drugs will lead to 134 units increase in output so it's now percentage increase leading to unit increase you see the difference in my terminology all right i believe we are making progress all right so let's come to the most popular one which is the cook douglas or double is cook douglas or double log uh, regression model in this in this on this i think i have a video that talk to Cook Douglas regression alone. You can leave that out. So in this video now, in this uh, analysis now, I beg your pardon, we are now doing the, the logged dependent variable and logged in dependent variable. So they are both logged. So in this case, let me see. Uh, so I'll say regress the same process. 
So now I'm regressing the log output and the logged independent variable. All right. Enter. Wow. Uh, the R square is super high. N no. The R square is high. The F value is high. Then the coefficients are now very moderate. Usually, the Cope Douglas is the best approach to pick when best regression when you are doing a production function. Or most, it's even most often the most uh, preferred amongst the three or four kinds of linear regression. And the reason is because uh, it you can uh, it if I, I do I explain to you now it helps to reduce the value of the coefficient it is can be twice differentiated and uh, and uh, it yes I think that's two two major reasons it can be twice differentiated and it helps to of course reduce the value of your coefficient. It helps reduce close the gap. Okay. It also helps if it helps reduce the variation among variables among the variables that you are using in the analysis. Just if you if the, this, if the standard deviation is wide or high, when you have Dr. Douglas regression, it helps close the gap between the standard deviation and the main deviation, as it were. So in this case, we are interpreting percentage increase lead to percentage increase. Drugs now is not significant. Pond size is as well not significant. But fingerlings, feed and labor, they remain significant. So if I'm to interpret this, I will let me interpret. Uh, and Cobb-Douglas equation is always expected to be concave. In this case, it is concave, which is okay. But there are cases where it's not concave. Concave meaning that all the coefficient will be positive, have a positive, all the variables should have a positive coefficient. But this may not be the case in all in all times. So if you have a Cobb Douglas regression that you don't have all positive, you should not worry yourself. You cannot as well interpret that way once other uh, parameters are well specified, uh, are well specified and of course having a good value. So the F value is, is 781, I think that 1%, which shows that the model was well specified. The R square is 95%, which suggests that 95% in the variation in catfish output was due to the input or due to the due to the variables captured in the model, while the remaining 4.85% is as a result of variables not captured. That should be 1 minus 0 0.58, 0 0.515 to get the error term. So that will be as a result of variables not captured. These are the error term. Now, the t value, if I'm to, to let me talk to feed, uh, the variable feed has a positive coefficient and is statistically similar at 1%. And suggest that a, a percentage increase in feed quantity of feed given to the catfish will lead to about 20.23 percent increase in the output of catfish. The same approach goes for the other. Uh, you want to, to interpret for fingerlings and label. All right, quickly, let me talk to top bit regression analysis. Now, you can do top bit regression analysis now if, uh, um, I don't want this video to be too long, it's already getting long. If you want to censor your dependent, so where does it apply? Let's say you have done your analysis and you have output. Output which can also be called yield, but however, you want to check productivity. Now, productivity is a function of uh, your output 
ratio of the output to the input physical term now and most time productivity whether a farmer is sub-productive uh, productive or super productive and uh, it's uh, it's always a continuous variable we see a farmer that has one point above is productive why those below one point are not productive so you might want to check factors that affect productivity or factors that affect in uh, that makes them not to be productive as such so to do that you just run you have to get that ratio statistics which will be the total output all over the total input in physical units now that very that most often it will come out in this form in form of a continuous variable let me summarize that so you see summarize topics all right so you see that the minimum is 0 0.9 of course the maximum is 1.4 so you run the series a continuous variable. Now, Tobit is is in between uh, 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 OLS. What we've been doing is ordinary least square regression technique and maximum likelihood estimation uh, technique. Now, the OLS regression, uh, uh, the maximum likelihood regression has the ability for you to check the marginal effect. But Tobit will not give you marginal effect that is different from the normal coefficient, which is big. that is why we say it's more or less an OLS regression. But it defines in, in the in the sense that it does not give you an F value. In the place of F value, it gives you a chi square like a maximum likelihood. Some people make mistake of trying to still check for marginal effect of a Tobit model. There's no need because it's just going to be the same with your question. So to run that, I'll come to statistics. I think I've been using command. Let me use uh, a, the menu now. So you just come to statistics, come to linear regression, come to sensor regression, you see Tobit. So you click Tobit. Once you click on Tobit, it gives you what do you want to be a dependent variable? So I will come, I have y of it. I saved it y of it. Now the independent variable, I come, I can pick. I want to use the logged ones. So let me pick the ones I log. Just by clicking on it, it will automatically come up. So drop. Yes. So it's asking what kind of sensoring do I want? So is it left no sensoring at the left or right sensoring so let me do no left sensoring the sensor at the right sensor so let's say let the value be one Let me specify it. Let it be one as a cutoff point of summation. So, okay. So I'm saying this two bit should be done. When I say right, I'm saying the analysis should be done with variables that are equal to or above one. You can see it here, right sensor variables that are equal to or above one. That's what I have just done. Of course, these are chi square, right? So the analysis variables equal and above. So let me do left sensor in two. So that I will now talk to all the interpretation at once. No right sensoring. Let me specify the left sensoring. One as well. So you see that now. Variables that are below or equal to one. 
Okay, I can let me do the last one. Then I want to talk to the man. We can censor both place. So let's say let's use the medium now. Let me see. Okay, we have zero point. So I can say let it censor zero point zero five and one point zero point zero five and one. So let me work with that. No particular reason, but let's say we'll get a reason later. Zero point five and one. So I'll just say okay. Okay, so this is okay now. Now be like let me get that now. Okay, so let me talk to yes. What we have done here is to say okay. Do an analysis for me for dependent variable that are above or equal to one. So this this is actually the factors that affect productivity now. Which of these variable will make these farmers more productive? The chi square is significant at one percent. We can see that already. Oh my time is fast, man. This figure at one percent we can see that already. I hope I've not I, I've been able to communicate with you. I didn't want it to be too fast. I wanted to get this and get it well. Now the top bit now we are saying now. So now let's pay attention to the t value and see which are significant. So in this case, I think only labor is significant. Labor and font size is significant. Font size has not been significant. Now you see now it's how significant is affecting productivity as well. And they have positive coefficient. So what this is saying is that now you interpret your Tobit model like the form of a linear model. Unit increase will lead to unit increase. So we see that in this in this one now, based on the result, a unit increase in labor will lead to about 0.018 unit increase in catfish output. Also. A unit increase in the farm in the pond size will lead to about 0 0.14 unit increase in the catfish output. All right, so this makes it makes sense. So for the left answering as well, okay. Of course, we see. But less censoring, we see that, of course, the chi square significant is still significant. The pseudo R now is high. According to Gujarati, we say try and get a pseudo R that is above 34%. This is 56%. The pseudo R, oh, pseudo R here is pretty low. But this is, this is, this is uh, better here. But however, I should, it, the pseudo R should not be interpreted in any time as an R square. It's a pseudo R. So this one now have oh thank God. Finally I have a negative coefficient I can interpret here. So the other part is productivity. This is this is people below the one I, I don't think that they are not productive in this case. So okay, let's just interpret as productivity. So we see like, pawn size is negative as a negative coefficient. So let me interpret this. I've been interpreting a positive question. So this says that the land uh, pond size is statistically significant at 5%. It has a negative coefficient. And it suggests that a unit increase in pond size will lead to about 0 0.9195 unit decrease in the output of catfish. Yes, I've been able to talk to negative question now. The chi square, to interpret the chi square, the chi square is 62.04, which is statistically significant at 1%, and suggests that the model was well specified. Okay, yes. Okay, so let me draw the, this, this session to a close. Uh, 
in the next video now i will talk to other predictive models i will talk to i will deal with i've been able to do talk to OLS generally here, except M except topics like the bridge of OLS and MLA. In the next video, I will talk extensively on M maximum likelihood <coughs> estimate. Thank you very much for watching this channel, watching this video. Thank you for your patience. I want to please ask you, please, to subscribe to my channel. Please refer your friends your colleagues to my channel so that they learn the right thing to do and they are able to do the analysis themselves and tell a good story on the analysis before i draw a final cutting there is a slide where i interpreted a regression analysis let me just run, read it read through it so you see so uh in terms so from the result the f statistics was 6.0 you can see it on the table which significant and significant at one percent level of probability this implies that the overall effect of the explanatory variable is statistically significant the r square was 0 0.09 this implies that nine percent of the variation in body mass index that is dependent variable was due to the explanatory variable captured in the model the remaining 91 percent was due to other variables not captured in the model and the error term so income food consumption and occupation had positive coefficient and we were significant at one percent one percent and five percent probability level respectively this implies that the unit increase in income food consumption and occupation will result to 1.2 1.5 and 2.1 unit increase in body mass index of the respondent respectively so this is how your interpretation should flow you can use this as a sample to interpret all your analysis now thank you very 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 much for your patience and watching through Please subscribe once again. Please, please subscribe. Thank you. And uh, next week, I'll be doing another video that will have all the maximum likelihood together that you can learn. Thank you very much.